This is a famous photograph. It's called Earthrise, and this was taken from the moon. And there were a lot of photographs like this taken from the Apollo missions that went to the moon. And this particular photograph was taken from Apollo 11, which was the first mission to actually land on the moon, where people got out of the spacecraft and walked around on the moon. And photographs like this really stunned the population to see pictures for the first time of the Earth just out there hanging in empty space amidst the blackness and, and taken from the surface of this very bleak world. World, the surface of the moon where there's no air, no life, no plants or animals or anything. And, and to see Earth alone out there amidst the blackness. And pictures like this were actually a big spur to the environmental movement at the time. Because you see Earth as, as really quite small amidst the emptiness of space and you realize that the world in which, in which we live, the place we inhabit, is really this little tiny place all alone in the middle of space. And it prompted people to take thought, take more thought of taking good care of the Earth. This video is about the Earth, Moon, and Sun system. And let's start by drawing a picture. You often see pictures like this to drawn to describe the Earth, Moon, and Sun system. Here's the Sun. And we draw some little rays of light coming out. And then the Earth is drawn out here going around the Sun. So we'll indicate an orbit around the Sun, something like that. And then the Moon, Earth's Moon, is orbiting around the Earth. And what diagrams like this capture is that the Earth orbits the Sun, and then the Moon orbits the Earth. And so what, what actually happens is the, the Earth-Moon system itself is going around the Sun. And diagrams like this are useful for explaining certain things about the Earth-Moon-Sun system, but diagrams like this are typically not drawn to scale. A diagram like this shows how the Earth and the Moon move relative to the Sun, but they don't give us an accurate visual picture of the sizes and the distances. And what I want to do now is show you some accurate images that will give you uh, some understanding of the relative sizes of these objects and how far apart they are. Here's a picture of the Earth and the Moon, and the Moon is not this close to Earth. But this picture shows you an accurate representation of how big they are compared to each other. The diameter of the moon is just about one-fourth the diameter of the earth. Just a little over one-fourth. In other words, you could line up four moons side to side inside the earth. Another comparison that's often made is the size of the moon compared to the size of the United States. The distance across the US is about the same as the distance across the moon, about 3,000 miles. Uh, the, the surface area, though, the total surface area of the US is only about one-fifth of the surface area of the moon. Again, though, this picture does not show how far apart they actually are. So let's look at this diagram. Here's the Earth over here on the left. And if Earth were that big, as big as it's shown in this picture, then the moon over here on the right would be about as big as this tiny circle. And this is the distance, how far apart they would be. That's about 30 Earth diameters from the Earth to the moon. And so that gives you, hopefully, some understanding of, of not just how big they are relative to each other, but how far apart the moon, the moon and the Earth are. Now let's talk for a minute about the Sun and the Earth. Here's a picture of the Sun. And if the Sun were the size shown in this picture, then the Earth would be the size of this little dot right here. You might not even be able to see it on your screen. It's just a little bit bigger than one pixel on my monitor. So that tells you that the, the Sun is huge compared to the Earth. The diameter of the Sun from one side to the other is about 109 times the diameter of the Earth. What that means is that the volume of the Sun, the volume is going to be about 109 cubed times the volume of the Earth. And, and 109 times 109 times 109 comes out to about 1.3 million 
times the volume of the earth. That means if the earth, if you could take the earth and turn it into liquid and pour it into a container the size of the sun, it would take 1.3 million earths to fill up that container. And as, as you can see, earth barely even shows up in this diagram. And now once again, the earth and the sun are not this close together. If they were, it would be really pretty toasty on the earth's surface. Um, here's a picture that shows the the relative distance. If this was the sun over here on the left and it were that big, then the earth would be over here and the earth and the moon are too small to see in this picture by a long by a, by a wide margin. This distance from the sun to the earth is about 107 times the diameter of the sun. In miles that works out to about 93 million miles. Now one thing that's kind of cool is, and, and you can do this with computers. When I cre created this graphic, I actually put the Earth in there. And the Earth is right there at the tip of that arrow. You just can't see it because it's too small. But if I zoom in on this part of the diagram, and I'll zoom in by about a factor of 10 here, and you'll see the arrowhead. And that little dot right there at the end, that's the Earth. So that's how big the Earth is compared to that arrowhead. Now I'll zoom back out. So there you have it. You can picture the sun over here and then 93 million miles away that tiny, tiny little dot out there in space. That's where we live.